so two questions in there. First question, Brian, is it possible that magnetic fields overall throughout the home will increase because uh, he's in Tucson, Arizona, and everyone is running AC at the maximum in the middle of the desert? Yeah, that's very common for, for that to happen. Or if there's electrical heating in the winter, that can happen too. So whenever we go on, go and test someone's home, what the day that we test, we kind of we try to make sure people know that like when you have so have a professional test, they're testing a spotlight of what your house is like at that time. And so like that's why it's good to also like purchase an inexpensive meter that measures magnetic fields accurately like the Trifield TF2 or the Sempertech meter so you can kind of monitor like different times of day, different different seasons when the neighborhood has things on and off, because the more current going through the lines in the neighborhood, the higher the magnetic field can be. Now, if everything's wired correctly and properly in the neighborhood, and the, it's a, you know, the power lines are a decent distance away, or they're buried, you shouldn't have any, any problems at all with, with magnetic fields. But if there's some kind of imbalance in the neighborhood or, there, or your neighbor has a wiring error and that's putting current like like uh, excess current on the neutral wire or or there's some kind of uh, grounding loop going on in the neighborhood um, that can cause magnetic fields in the whole neighborhood to be elevated beyond what they should be. Um, so it but it also depends just on, you know, if your house is sitting in an area where like it's like the power lines are powering like thousands of houses in a neighborhood down the street and they've all got their AC on. Sometimes even like normal power lines can be excessive without there needing to be a wiring error. But um, I think that, you know, it's, it kind of always goes back down to you have to take the measurements, you know, and, uh, and continue, continue to monitor. And I like to think there's light at the end of the tunnel for everybody, no matter where they're at. But it's also like, even in my own house, I took out my gauss meter in the middle of the summer and my power lines were giving us like a little, like, like almost one milligauss. And, you know, when I tested before, when we bought the house, it was like at 0.4 at the highest part of, of the house. So I was like, dang it. Like, there's some parts of the, some times of the year where the magnetic fields are a little bit too high, you know, that I would, I'd rather they not be that high. So, yeah. um, so like you can't trust just one reading. You have to continually monitor with magnetic fields, especially, uh, based on like the power surges in the neighborhood. Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, you know, I am the co-creator of the EMF circle, along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our circle members. Every month we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q and a session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can listen back to. Everything is pre -record is recorded. You can either join live or just listen to the replay. So we have a Cars master class. We have a pr free protection masterclass uh, uh, also that we did, and we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward. So we hope that you join us inside the EMF circle. Just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us. I hope to see you then.